Okay, guys, good morning. I hope everybody is fine. Hope you had a very nice sleep. I did. Anyway, so today we are going to, to begin a new class that talks about the different, different type of economic systems. Okay. Uh, let's uh, begin. Uh, first of all, let me show you guys, because uh, you have already all the information loaded up in the platform, okay? So pay attention, uh, let me show you. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to open, I'm trying to open the, the platform, this is the number four, uh, C floor four, that's you guys. Okay, okay. So in your platform, you have already all this information. You have a couple of videos over here. I don't know if you watch it, but at the end, you have all the information you need. Now, the title of this chapter, remember, we're starting, we are starting uh, the second term or the second trimester. So you have to, in your notebook, you have to follow a page in order to separate first trimester with the second trimester, okay? So, the title is Introduction to Economic Systems. Okay, you have to write on top of your notebook, Introduction to Economic Systems, and underline it, and then you need to write the vocabulary. This is vocabulary number one. And you could find it over here in this PDF, is the document where I got all the information in order to write or create these PowerPoint. So you will need to complete your vocabulary, and also you need to complete the assessment questions. Question one, two, three, four, five, and six. These questions are very easy to answer. So, and you will find it over here in this PDF. Okay, guys, so you have to download it and then find out about these six questions. One, he just arrived. One, okay, now. So you have everything, you have all your resources that you need in order to complete these activities, guys, okay? Now, let's go right into it. Let me open the PowerPoint. Is this one? There's one out. Oh, here it is. Oh my God. Okay, let me go. Okay, let me open it. Now, uh, Jesus Christ. Let me go back. Okay, now this is the type of economic system over here. These are the objectives. I am not going to read it. And also here are the key terms or the vocabularies. Economic system, traditional economic, common economy, and market economy. These are the three type of economic system that we are going to study. See the advantage or disadvantage. But what is, guys, what is a type of economic system? An economic system is the way, in la manera, is the way of society uses, la manera como la usa, sus su recursos escasos, your, its scarce resources to satisfy its people's unlimited want, para de satisfacer las, la, la necesidad de los deseos ilimitados del que de las personas. Eso es la manera como se maneja, eso es un sistema económico, un sistema económico, ¿ok? So that's an economic system. There are three basic types of economic system. I think there are more than this one, but these are the ones that we are going to study. These are the traditional ones, okay? So the first one is traditional economy, command economic, and market economies, okay? Let's begin with the first one, the traditional. Like it says, it's the traditional. That it begins, uh, it, it starts at the beginning of ages, okay? Economic and traditional economic is an economic system in which families, clans or try make economic decisions based on customs or belief basado en que costumbres o creencias that have been handed down que han sido pasadas de generación en generación si en la comunidad se cultivaba tomate o se cultivaba yuca ellos van a cultivar tomate y yuca toda de generación en generación si ellos eh, casaban eh, se iban a casar también van a casar Iba a pasar de generación a decir, ellos iban a, 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 de pesca en grupo. Eso se iba a dar siempre de generación en generación, ¿ok? 
So the goal of this society is, is survival. La meta de esto es simplemente sobrevivir. <coughs> everyone, everyone has a set, set role in this task. Todo el mundo tiene su trabajo que hacer. Men, often, usualmente los hombres son los cazadores, las mujeres se encargan de los crops, de los, de los, uh, de los uh, sembradíos, de lo que se está cultivando, y también cuidar de los chicos, raise children. Okay. The youngest help with everyday chores. Los chicos, los jóvenes ayudan en todos los quehaceres diarios. While learning the skills they will need for their adults' roles. Ellos también van a estar aprendiendo todos los roles que tienen que hacer cuando ellos sean grandes o adultos. Aquí hay una columna de ventajas y desventajas de este sistema económico. Advantages. Advantages, traditional economics. There is a little to uncertain. O sea, que no hay nada que uno no sepa. Everyone knows what roles to play. Todo el mundo sabe que, cuál es su rol que hacer. And life is generally stable. Muy sencilla, la vida es generalmente estable. Predecible y continua. O sea, que no hay acción alguna. No hay emociones, no hay nada. Entre las desventajas, las ventajas de la tradición economía tend to discourage new ideas. Por ejemplo, si usted quiere, si usted tiene la idea de mejorar el sistema de regalío, por ejemplo, de esa comunidad. Ellos van a decir, pero ¿para qué vamos a cambiar eso si siempre ha funcionado de esta manera? Así que, no, 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 vamos a mantenerlo de la manera que siempre ha sido de generación en generación. O sea que no hay progreso, como dice en la segunda. Lack of progress lower standards of living. Y los estándares de vida son muy bajos, simplemente lo, lo necesario. Esa es la diferencia, la desventaja de un sistema tradicional en este sistema económico, ¿ya? Muy sencillo, básico. Muy bien, vamos al, vamos al segundo. El command economy. Acá, acuérdense que las, las, las tres preguntas de la economía, ¿qué se va a hacer? ¿Cómo se va a hacer? ¿Y para quién? Las contesta las tradiciones y las familias. Las tradiciones. Todo se basa en tradición de generación en generación. Entonces, en, en el sistema que sigue, que es el command economy, que es más bien el donde el gobierno, el Estado, es el que maneja y decide qué se va a producir ¿Cómo se va a producir? ¿Y para quién se va a producir? Las tres preguntas de la economía. So, the second type of economy is the command economy. The government decides what goods and services will be produced, how they will be produced, and how they will be distributed. The command economy, governments officially consider the resource and need of country and allocate those resources according to their judgment. They are the ones who decide what to do. The ones of individual consumer are rarely considered. No lo consideran para nada. Ellos son los que deciden. Rara vez consideran las necesidades, los deseos de los consumidores. Now, North Korea and Cuba, and now we can add Nicaragua and Venezuela, are current example of command economies. Un ejemplo de economía de comando. Before the collapse of communism in Europe, countries such as Soviet Union for Poland and East Germany also were command economies. Now over here, there is a list, a very short list of advantages and disadvantages, okay? Economy can change direction directly. The advantage is that they can change directly very quickly in a very short time. Now, back in, in the 70s, uh, the, so, the Soviet Union or Russia, They used to produce a lot of uh, crops. So they, the, the economy was um, based on the first sector. In the primer sector, that's the, that's the, the agricultural sector. So they, they produce a lot of crops, a lot of crops. Then they decided to change from sector, primary sector to, to secondary sector. That is the industry. Now, nowadays, Uh, Russia is one of the highest uh, industrial economic in the world. So they changed from agriculture to industry. They, they still have some agriculture, but now the, 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 the big, the, 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 most of the economy is based on the industrial economy, okay? So that's why they say the command, they can make this kind of decision very quickly. And the social programs are available to almost everyone. Social programs like health programs, education programs, um, um, 
what else like they are the ones who provide they provide the food and they give you something like a coupons in order for you to go to a grocery store and try to collect all your food so that's one of the advantages okay of this kind of command economy what is the disadvantage no design it to meet the ones no te sirve para satisfacer las necesidades y solamente ciertas eh, los gustos solamente ciertas necesidades de las personas okay no hay incentivo para trabajar duro ¿Por qué? porque simplemente el gobierno dice tú vas a hacer esto y ya that's it okay so there's no incentive and requires a large decision making bureaucracy okay so that's one advantage and disadvantage of a common economy now let's talk about the third one market economy the third type of economy system a market economy is based on individual choices not government directives o sea que en el comando en el anterior sí el gobierno decía todo pero acá en el market economy solamente los individuos que están envueltos en esto son los que o sea los consumidores y los productores son los que manejan la economía ok por supuesto el gobierno les da la, las facilidades they give you all the resources or what they need in order to to produce or, or to interact smoothly uh, between these two uh, uh, these two uh, sectors the consumers and the producers consumers are free to spend their money esa es una parte si tienes dinero si no tienes dinero estamos mal so consumers are free to spend their money as they wish to enter into business para entrar cualquier tipo de business, or to sell their labor to whomever they want to Luis Rodríguez he does a lie Luis Rodríguez okay they make choices about how to use their limited resources to earn the most money possible now Adam Smith remember Adam Smith is is the father of the modern economy and he noted in the world of nation remember the world of nation is like the bible of the modern economy in 1776 when you make economic decision you are you act in your self interest cuando tomas una decisión es por tu tienes un interés en algo but you are led by an invisible hand la famosa mano invisible de señor adam smith que es el que maneja todo maneja todo y hace que todo eh, sea eh, Como debe ser. Okay, now we just talk about the traditional, the common, and the market economy. Now let's go back to traditional economy and let's gonna go, let's going to go a little bit deeper into the, the characteristics of the traditional economies. One great advantage of traditional economy is that it so clearly answers the three economic questions. A traditional society produce what best ensure their survival they only produce what they need and that's it not anymore methods of production are the same as they have always been siempre ha sido así toda su vida system of distribution also determined by customs and tradition in a traditional economy then there is little disagreement hay poco desacuerdo over economic goals sobre la meta económica y los roles ya todo el mundo sabe qué tiene que hacer on the other hand traditional economic resist change se resiste al cambio siempre quieren mantener lo mismo como siempre ha sido therefore they are less productive than they might be if they adopt new approaches so they don't want to they don't want to adopt new approaches why because they don't want to be less productive further while traditional defines role eliminates conflict. Elimina los conflictos porque todo ya está definido. ¿Quién se va a encargar de qué? Okay? Let's move on. Now, of course, the traditional system is been changing due to the modernism. Okay? Under pressure to change around the world, traditional economies are under pressure for the force of changes. Change. For instance, over here we talk about the Kavango people of Namibia. That's a tribe in Namibia in South Africa. For example, have lived as substance farmer for centuries. Agricultura de subsistencia por siglos. Substance farmer grow just enough to feed their own families. Modern, telecom modern telecommunication like internet, Netflix, things like that, however, have bombarded the Kabango with images of the war 
beyond their homelands, lo que, es, lo que hay más allá de sus tierras, que es la tecnología y cosas buenas, modernas. As a result, many young Cabango want something more than the life of sustenance and farming. Thousands have left their homelands for the cities. Even the old way of farming are beginning to change. Eso es lo mismo que sucede con los, con los cunas. Muchos cunas se han venido a vivir acá a la ciudad. O si no, también por acá en Chiriquí, los Nove Buglé, los Emberá, se han venido todo a la ciudad. O a las ciudades como David o Santiago, qué sé yo. Y se están quedando, se está quedando despoblado. O sea, solamente los viejos permanecen en esa área y eventualmente va a desaparecer esa cultura. Y también, por ende, el sistema económico. Este es un ejemplo, miren. Miren el penthouse que tienen acá los de Cabango. Miren el penthouse que es pretty. Con su techo lo, tiene, lo sostiene unas rocas. Igual aquí mismo, si ustedes se van a la 9, 9, de, 9 de enero, por acá por, por, por Tumba Muerto, por acá por San Miguelito, va a encontrar casas así como esta. ¿no? no exactamente como esto, pero sí sostenida por rocas que sostienen los techos. La manera tradicional, ellos cazan a sí mismos eh, fishing. Eh, pescan de esta manera como siempre nos ha hecho entonces y como trabajan la tierra con dos bueyes no tiene un tractor que lo ayuda para hacer su trabajo más eh, más rápido ok guys so now I'm, I need I want you to I want to play a couple of videos that talks about this uh, type of economies it's 935 we have 10 minutes less than 10 minutes to talk about this uh, Let's begin with the market system, okay? Stop. ¿Por qué no has aprendido inglés todavía? ¿Sabías que 20% de la población de la Tierra habla inglés fluidamente? Hey there, Econ students. Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about a market. Now, while watching the video, make sure to use your guided notes. You can find them in the description below. I create the guided notes for each video. They go along with the video and they're there to help you remember all the important things. That way, when you have your quiz or test, you know all the stuff. And if you need a review, you can just look at your notes. So a market economy is where businesses and individuals, our consumers, they make up all of the decisions. They are the ones that are going to answer our three basic economic questions. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about that, check out my video on the three economic questions. You can click on the top right right now and view that video. Then come back to this one. But consumers and businesses, they will answer the what, the how, and for whom. They're in charge. The government will not play a role in here. This is where we'll have a free market or laissez-faire. In this market, supply and demand is key. This is where it'll be determined of what prices are, what we should produce, and for those people who want to try to go against the grain, they have the opportunity to, and maybe they'll succeed or they'll fail. Now, there's a bunch of different things that happen in this type of an economy. Ultimately, what's occurring is consumers vote with their dollars. When they go and purchase things, it tells the economy what they want, and then businesses react. The businesses that can't keep up and the businesses that don't react fast enough, well, then they fail. Now, we're going to get into some of the advantages and disadvantages, and there's a lot here. This is one of the economies you probably have heard a lot of over the past couple of years, especially going through high school. So, let's figure out right now what the advantages are and disadvantages are to a market economy. Now, a market economy has a lot of advantages and disadvantages. Some of the advantages for a market economy is there is a high degree of consumer satisfaction, of just, in general, people get what they want to buy. And there's a lot of individual freedom that occurs in a market economy. Businesses get to decide what they want to produce, how they want to produce it, and for whom. And over time, the economy can adjust to a lot of different changes especially the small ones. The day-to-day -day changes, it does a very good job adapting to. An example here is when you look at gas prices. When we see gas prices for a couple of years consecutively be lower, we will start to see an increase for bigger cars and SUVs and trucks because gas prices are lower, people have more money, they'll start buying there. However, when gas prices go up for a while and it appears like they're going to continuously go up, we'll start to see higher sales of smart cars and fuel efficient cars. In fact, factories will shift their resources to produce more smaller vehicles when gas prices are higher because they can sell more vehicles and they want to make sure that they meet the demand. Supply and demand is what determines prices and what is produced and that can be great. 
All of this individual freedom lets people be able to react immediately. They don't have to wait for a large bureaucracy to decide anything. There's very little government interference and people get to make their own decisions. And so we see people happy and we also see a lot of production being made. And innovation takes off in this economy. There's nothing to slow you down. You are the driver of your own freedom and destination, you could say. You get to determine what happens. While a market economy might seem great, there's also a lot of disadvantages as well. This is one of the types of economies that doesn't provide basic needs for everyone. There's a lot of uncertainty that is in a market economy, both for business and for the individual. It's hard and a lot of people fail in this type of an economy. Now, the other thing that it doesn't do a good job with is providing services. It actually has a horrible time at providing certain ones. It won't make sense. And this is normally where we'll see the government step in. Things like the military, roads, water, electricity, that is normally where the government comes in because there isn't enough economic incentive for the private business to take over. And we'll kind of debate about that and talk about that more in class. But that's one of the areas that it struggles with. Another issue that the market economy has is it is susceptible to failure. If three things aren't met, it can collapse. One of them is consumers have to be knowledgeable. They have to have an understanding of what's available to them. Same thing with businesses. They have to know who they're hiring. They have to know information so they can make the best decisions. The other one is resources have to be able to be moved. You can't have it where a company could lock down an area and say, well, this is our road. We're going to block everyone else out. No one gets to bring in raw materials to build anything. It wouldn't work then. There has to be, and this is the third one, competition as well. We have to have a competitive market where supply and demand is functioning correctly. And we'll get into the debate of what the government should do with this. Some Right here, let's move on to the other one uh, real fast. We have only five minutes. I'm trying to go as fast as I can and then... Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever... Try to uh, watch this video uh, later, okay? Um, let's see. Awesome. So make sure to check those videos out. Now, enough talking. Let's figure out what it... Now, if you've seen my videos before, you've heard this speech, but take out the guided notes. You can find this. A traditional economy is centered around the idea that as a society, you will just keep doing what you have in the past. Passing down of cultures and traditions is key. All economic questions, including the allocation of scarce resources, is determined by elders and what have been done in the past. Really, the individual doesn't have a lot of freedom in this type of economy. They're going to just do what has been done before them. If you were born into a family who's a farmer, well, you're going to be a farmer. And if this is how they tilled the land, well, that's how you will till the land. There's not a lot of room for innovation or change. You'll continue to do what people before you have done. Now, this economy is often practiced in rural communities and tribal life, and it still exists today. But this is a traditional economy. Every economic system needs to answer the three basic economic questions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my video on the three economic questions. You can click the card in the top right and view it. Then come back to this one and you can see exactly what's happening with those. A traditional economy is actually pretty simple how they decide to answer them. The first one of what to produce, well, it's based on tradition. So if you're born again into a family of farmers, well, you're farming. If you're born into fishermen, well, you will fish. There isn't a lot of leeway there. You're going to do what people in your family have always done. And that solves the what to produce. Now, for the how to produce, again, you will go off tradition. So however it had been done in the past, that's what you will do. And for whom, you won't have to worry about that question either because society has already determined, especially in smaller communities and rural life, normally you are providing then for everyone in the society. Everyone has a specific task. Now, some of the advantages to a traditional economy is there isn't a lot of uncertainty. You know exactly what you're going to do, and that can be refreshing. It's less stressful, you'll have a little bit more free time, and you don't have to worry about as many things. On the other side, though, the disadvantage is we see stagnation occur. We start to see things level off. We don't see an improved standard of living. We don't see innovation. In fact, people who have new ideas or are different from others are discouraged and almost pushed out of society. They are rejected. It is unacceptable to go against the status quo. And so these can be big issues that really cause a society and this economic system to stall out and continue to stay the same instead of 
of progressing and creating more economic growth and a higher standard of living and a better life for everyone. Now, as you can see, a traditional economy, there is some pros, but there's also a lot of disadvantages. Life is completely dictated by tradition. Elders have a lot of power, and really the individual has little to none. Make sure you understand what a traditional economy is, how it answers the three basic economic questions, and what are some of the disadvantages and advantages. Oh, guys, uh, we don't have enough time. Uh, I suggest you for you to watch this one. Remember, it's Mr. Sin, and it talks over here talk about the command economy. And it's very interesting and give you more hints, more information uh, to complete all your knowledge about uh, these three uh, economic systems, okay? We don't have enough time, guys, so please uh, try to complete all the activities that you are supposed to do. It's already in your platform. And then I'll see you next week, okay? Have a nice weekend. Enjoy it. Wash your hands and behave. Bye-bye.